Sri Ram Finance Surges after the company approves the sale of its housing finance subsidiary Sri Ram Housing Finance to private equity major Warburg Pincus for about 4360 crore rupees. Brokerage firm IFL Securities issues a buy call on the stock. In fact, the management will join us shortly to discuss this further. Vedanta climbs uh, a percent as the company will consider fundraising and first interim dividend for F525 at the board meet that's scheduled for May 16th. So, Mato under pressure despite a strong growth in the fourth quarter. Brokerage from Jeffrey says easy money in the stock has been made and return expectations in the future should be a little more modest. Kochi Shipyard jumps nearly 8% after the company bags an order in the range of 500 to 100,000 crores from a European client. Hindustan Aeronautics surges over 2% after brokerage UBS issues a buy call, raises the target price from 3,600 rupees all the way up to 5,200 rupees. UBS also expects a three times rise in the company's order book over FY23 to FY27. Hello and welcome to Chart Busters. I'm Nigel Asusa. Joining me as always is Mangla Malu. And as you can see, we're trading well in the green, so that's good news. But the Nifty Bank is the one that's as flat as can be in the first hour of trade. And that's the one that's been relatively underperforming. So let's see where it goes from here. The good news, though, Manglam, is we have way more number of stocks that are advancing in comparison to the number of stocks that are declining. So 1,600 in the green, 600 in the red. You like when the advanced decline ratio is in favor of the bulls. Absolutely, Nigel. You know, a couple of days in the market, if it does not fall, then the shorts that are there in the system will perhaps, you know, fuel the next move on the upside. But as of now, as we speak, you know, uh, around 22,300 to 22,350, there may be a bit of resistance that's still about 150 points away from where we are on the Nifty. No problems for the market. So let's go straight to, uh, you know, Shilpa Raut, who's joining in with her technical view on the indices and a lot of individual stocks as well. Shilpa. Uh, good morning, Nigel and Manglam, and thank you for having me on the show. It's talking, you know, very well uh, correct, and we see that Nifty is holding on to those very crucial levels of 21,800 to 700 zones, where we have seen that time and again a rebound has happened, and we have seen a short covering rally towards 22,500 to 22,600 zones. So if this 22,000 mark is now held on, then the rally will definitely resume towards 22,500. So a uh, positional long for targets of those areas for 22,600, keep a stop loss just below 22,000 and stay long. And bank nifty, as long as we are holding 46,800 on, on a broader basis, I believe the trend is very strong and intact again for the mark towards 49,000 to 49,500. So the crucial previous support levels were uh, you know, respected and we have seen those bounce coming in. Okay, all right. Uh, what about uh, individual stocks? What are you looking at? I have one buy and one sell, Nigel. The buy would be in M&M. M&M, we see that it is moving very strong and the stock is trading at around 22, 35, 20 to 40 zones. So the levels of 2200 is a you know, breakout zone where the stock is sustaining now. So as long as we are holding this 2200 mark, we will see the stock moving towards 23, 20 to 23, 40 zones. So this is a little positional trade, but one can stay long in this. The other one would be a sell in Berger Paint. Berger Paint, we see time and again, it is, you know, have, it is witnessing the selling pressure at around 500 odd zone. So as long as, you know, it is below 500, we will see the mark of, you know, 470 to 460 coming in. So Berger Paint is a sell and m, &M is a buy. All right, Berger Paint is a sell, m, m is a buy. m, &M virtually at the high point of trade with a gain of almost 3%. Sun Pharma is spiking up. HDFC Bank, which led the rally in the second half yesterday, is continuing to do well. Currently at the high point, will be in focus in the second half of trade today, also on account of the Nifty Financial Services expiry. But let's uh, thank Shilpa on that note and get you to our special segment, a few ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. And today we have Anant Chaudhary joining in. Today's talk idea is Crompton Greaves Consumer Electricals. Uh, it is the largest manufacturer of fans with a market share of 29%. The company also claimed a position in the top three players in other segments such as pumps and lightings. We like the company for multiple reasons. First, the preference of Indian consumers is shifting towards premium, energy efficient and aesthetically appealing products. Uh, that is where Crompton is focused on. Uh, this will strengthen its innovation and increase the share of high margin premium products in their sales mix. That will be done by significant spending on advertisement and sales promotion. Uh, second, the company is a market leader in residential pumps. Now its market share in agri pumps has also increased by 27 to 8%, which now contributes 20 to 25% of the pumps business. 
Third, to diversify into kitchen appliances, uh, they acquired Butterfly Gandhimati appliances in 2022, uh, which has a strong brand recall in South India. Lastly, the price erosion in lighting business is now over, and Crompton is now focused on its ceiling light portfolio. It has also discontinued its CFL business and now will focus on LED business only. The stock trades at 37 times on FY25 earnings. Uh, key risk for Crompton is uh, high competitive intensity and any weakness in the brand building initiatives. All right, with that, we'll slip into a short break. And as promised, on the other side, we'll have the management of Sriram, housing, Sriram Finance joining in to discuss the company's stake sale in the housing finance business. Uh, on the other side, we have Umesh Revankar, who's the executive vice chairman, coming in on the other side. Welcome back. Sridham Finance is the stock which is on our radar among the top Nifty gainers today as uh, the company has approved the sale of its housing finance subsidiary for about uh, a valuation of 46.30 crores uh, to private equity major Warburg Pincus. Umesh Levankar, who is the executive vice chair of the company, now joins in to discuss this further. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Levankar, for joining in. Congratulations to the deal finally concluding. I remember the multiple conversations that we have about this and you said, yes, it is in the offing. At some point, maybe it will happen and happen it has. Um, you know, the only thing that I wanted to know is that, uh, is it a little lower than what you were earlier expecting? Because I'm looking at, uh, you know, your earlier comments itself, basis, the valuation assumptions that you gave, it would come anywhere around 6, 6,500 crores. The offers which were there, which were close to around 5,000, 5,500 crores. So what gave for you to actually Go ahead and sell it at a valuation multiple lower than peers and lower than what the street was anticipating? Yeah, good morning. Uh, we never gave out any number. We did not have any ballpark target numbers. Whatever we felt that, what was the uh, best rate uh, that is uh, uh, what offer that we got, we should be able to uh, conclude the deal. And also, we were looking at a good uh, 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 what call partner who can you know, take it forward. Uh, that's also very important when we make the deal because the management has to be comfortable uh, in continuing the business. Uh, we have built a very efficient leadership and management in the SHFL and we are proud of it. And we feel that this deal and the Warburg is a good name uh, uh, to reckon with and also they have done in the past a certain uh, transaction uh, uh, of uh, uh, total uh, investment and making it uh, bigger and better. And we are quite comfortable and happy with the deal. All right. Hi, Mr. Ravankar. Uh, good morning and good to see you in. This is Nigel on this side. I recall two months ago, I was trying to push you for a date and you said, Nigel, in the first quarter of FY25, it will be done. So good on you. You kept your word on that. Maybe, in fact, the street was factoring in a little higher number, but you have given us rational on that front. Uh, tell us, how does this change things? What does it take your capital adequacy ratio to? Uh, the capital adequacy of SFL uh, will uh, improve by nearing to 100 basis point. Uh, that is one thing. And that will help us to grow our business uh, uh, faster for the next uh, year or so. And, uh, we, I, I, and also, no, we can focus on our business, which is the core. Our core business is lending to businesses uh, lending for uh, buying of commercial vehicle uh, and uh, SMA businesses. And we will focus on that. Uh, the housing needs a certain uh, what to call uh, more specialization and it needs more attention and it also needs a lot of uh, capital because it is the fastest growing uh, uh, segment and also a company. And we felt that it is uh, better to uh, no, uh, focus on our core business and uh, improve the capital education of the SFL. Right. Uh, fair point there. But, you know, just uh, for bookkeeping, if you could tell us, what is the net amount that will come to the company, X of all the taxes, etc., fees, whatever needs to be paid? So what's the deal done at and what's the net amount that comes to you? Uh, the, the total proceeds that come into the company is uh, for, because we have 84%, uh, uh, 3908. Uh, the PNL impact is uh, 1360 crores after tax. 
So you get 1360 crores after taxes, etc. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's talk about business then. You know, you get some capital. Uh, the bandwidth of the company as well is now focused on the core business, not on the housing part of the business. What is the growth you're looking at? And give us some understanding, uh, Mr. Ravankar. Some part of, uh, you know, the markets believe there is pain in rural in the rural market. Have you experienced anything on that front? Uh, see, this year we do expect a little slow in the first quarter because of election. But it is a temporary and we feel that the moment the new government comes in, all the... Uh, the government projects and infra projects will uh, start functioning uh, or st start getting implemented. As far as rural is concerned, we are really witnessing a good, uh, a good credit growth in the rural, and the demand is good. And the even the uh, asset quality has improved significantly in the rural area. So we are very quite happy and comfortable in the rural growth. The demand for tractors. Two wheelers have grown significantly, and most of the two wheeler demand is coming uh, in the uh, rural belt, especially the agrarian economy, uh, UP, Bihar, uh, MP, and the interior Maharashtra. Uh, so we feel that rural is doing well, and with a good monsoon predicted, this year also it should do well. All right. You know, uh, the to the previous answer that you gave with regards to reallocating some of the proceeds of this into higher growth opportunities. That's something that brokerages echo as well. This transaction should enable SHFL to reallocate the capital to its higher ROA vehicle finance and consumer finance businesses itself. You've given us the number, 1360 crores is the net that comes into your books. If you could give us a sense of how much would be allocated towards, uh, you know, commercial vehicle business, how much of it would be allocated towards consumer finance business, at what rate will you leverage your book with the kind of uh, capital that you're adding? If you look at the uh, our segmental growth, uh, commercial vehicle is growing at around 15%. The passenger vehicle is growing fastest because the demand for passenger vehicle in the tier two, three towns are the highest and it's growing more than 25%. So passenger vehicle will definitely grow faster this year also because more uh, income, disposable income is with uh, uh, in that segment, the tier two or three towns. And then SME business, SME business itself is uh, uh, you know, having good traction and demand is quite good. And we are quite bullish on SME business getting expanded into smaller towns. And we have reach because now post merger, we have 3000 plus branches, we have a reach and we should be able to do well. Then additionally, we also would like to focus on uh, gold business, which we feel that our reach will help us to increase our uh, um, market expansion there. So you you haven't given us the split. Uh, how much of this 1360 crores goes into uh, one and no, the other? See, the uh, the uh, money is fungible. It depends upon the... We, we disperse more than 10,000 crores every month. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if we cannot really allocate uh, pie yeah. to pie each of the mm -hmm. segments. Any other measures that you want to uh, undertake to focus on the core business? you have any other non-core assets, so-called non-core assets that you would like to sell? Uh, right now, we don't uh, have any plans because this is one subsidiary we had. Uh, all other businesses are in single company. So we hmm. would be focusing on uh, the little high-yielding business to have a better margins in our, uh, in, in our business. And generally... Speaking, uh, we would prefer to do a small ticket uh, lending to small entrepreneurs, not the large ticket to um, mid and large uh, entrepreneur businesses. That's our core strength. Our core strength is to reach, be of uh, help and be of a friend to the businesses. Right. What would be those high yielding businesses and also um, gold business? Would you at some point look at unlocking value there because the street is suddenly seeing a lot of potential in gold lending. See, with the gold price going up, uh, the gold lending uh, of people coming for gold loan have increased because they would like to unlock the value of the uh, investment they have made in the gold. That is banned. It is also available at a cheaper rate compared to any other uh, source of uh, borrowing. If you go and borrow hand loans, you need to pay very high interest rates 
uh, especially in the uh, uh, what you call the informal segment. And this is very handy for anyone to raise money at much reasonable rate. And for us, it is high yielding. But if you go by the market, uh, especially the pawnbroker segment and all, it, it just coming into a formal segment or NBFC, will definitely uh, get a better uh, better deal. And if we have increased our reach, see earlier uh, gold was offered in around 1,000 branches. Today, we are able to add another uh, 600 branches. So around 1,600 branches are able to now give a gold loan. So that, that kind of reach. And we have 3,000 branches. We can add more as we uh, you know, progress. So th this kind of reach is giving us uh, uh, you know, good traction. And we should be able to uh, take advantages of our reach and the branch network and the people. We have 75,000 people on uh, uh, employed in our company. So that kind of reach we have. So small ticket, we can do well with uh, good understanding of the people and also mm. by providing them a service uh, of higher standard. All right, final question before we let you go, Mr. Ivankar. Uh, now that, uh, you know, an important uh, imponderable for the company has gone past you, you're getting some money, you're looking to grow. Also, there is uh, the election-related uncertainty amidst all of this. What is the kind of disbursement target that you have for this year? No, this year we have given target, uh, we have guided the uh, market with 15% uh, AUM growth on the top line. But our focus will be to improve the bottom line this year. We are uh, trying to get more digital play and uh, we are also trying to improve our uh, uh, operational efficiency. And uh, you can definitely expect a better bottom line growth uh, than the top line growth. So that's what we are targeting this year. The reason why I ask you this question is that, Mr. Ivankar, the, the time you gave us this guidance of 15%, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you included this additional capital coming in uh, on account of this sale in that guidance. And now that you have some more capital coming in, would the disbursement guidance not improve by a couple of uh, percentage points? See, uh, the, uh, the 360 gross net coming in is a, a, a small uh, sum. I, as, I was, uh, as I was telling you, it's 10,000 gross. It's a right. disbursal every month we have. So uh, it is not be really uh, making a big difference. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ivankar, for joining in and giving us, uh, uh, you know, the lowdown on this deal that has happened. 1360 crores is the next net that comes into you after uh, selling your stake in the housing finance business for a value of almost 46, 30 crores for the entire business. And that is something that uh, you will deploy into your high growth businesses. Wish you good luck. 15% disbursement growth with a better bottom line growth is what you're guiding for FI25. With that, we'll step into a short break. On the other side, we'll get you more on the markets and a lot of individual stock-specific actions. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, keep an eye out on the broader markets, actually. A few stocks are bucking the trend. Ethos, that stock is now up close to 8%. Massive move is what we're seeing out there. Thyrocare, we were highlighting that there, it was seeing some fair bit of delivery-based buying. In fact, the delivery-based buying was the highest that we've seen in more than a year. It comes out with a set of numbers today. I don't know whether the street is seeing some kind of a pull through. There's been a rank underperformer, mind you. In the last two years, the stock has come down from around 1,200 rupees to around 600 rupees. For the time being, it's moved to the high point of the day. So keep an eye out uh, on that one. Nava Limited, that's the other stock in there. It has some tailwinds. They have been reducing the debt on the books. That stock as well has uh, spiked up. And Arthi Pharma, from the word go, you know, that stock has been doing well. Now it's up close to on 11%, so massive up move. And Mangalam, GE Shipping, it was up more than 10%. A large trade took place yesterday. The management had been sounding quite positive. Now it's cut those gains. It's now still up close to around 5.5%, 6%, but it's come off the high point. It's come off the high point, Nigel. And a couple of other stocks also doing extremely well. Philolex Industries, remember here itself, yesterday the management spoke about, you know, growing in line with the 10 to 15% uh, rate of the industry. But in that, the non-agri business, which is more margin accretive for them, growing a clip faster. So Philolex Industries has moved about 7.5% uh, higher, open mildly in the red from there. That's Phoenix Mills that I'm talking about. Uh, uh, I'm talking about Philolex Industries. Phoenix Mills is the one which is flashing for you on the screen, which is also at the high point. But Phenolex Industries seeing a much bigger gain of almost 8%. Arvind Smart Spaces is the other one, which is up 6%. And for the last few trading sessions, a big move is what we're seeing on Greenland. I remember our colleague Yash having spoken about a potential deal in uh, one of these, uh, you know, MDF slash laminates makers 
in uh, the recent past. But uh, just keep an eye out on this one as well. This one's moving on decent volumes. Negative for the month, but is recouping some of those earlier losses, has moved to the high point of trade. Alongside that, we are seeing moves in uh, the regular names like, you know, Naveen Fluorine, which has do, done well. We have Gujarat Gas, which has moved higher as well, and Balram Purchini from the FNO pack. But uh, we're talking about all big results today, and the biggest of them all from the Nifty pack. Bharti Airtel expected to report their numbers. Reema joins in with what the street is expecting. Reema. Thanks so much for that. So today the stock is very quiet, but since the beginning of the year, the stock has given a return of 25% and in the last one year, it's seen a rally of close to about 60%. The key reason for the rising optimism is that there is market repair going on. Vodafone Idea has emerged as a player and if Vodafone Idea has to be successful uh, and a strong player, we need tariff hikes. And therefore, the expectation being built in the market is that we will see a tariff increase once the election gets over and that will be positive for all companies, including Bharti Airtel. Now, on to the consolidated numbers. We're working with a revenue growth of approximately 1% quarter on quarter, EBITDA to come in at 52.6%. Profit numbers are all over the place, but according to our poll, it could come in slightly lower. But remember, 25% of Bharti's value or financials come in from Airtel Africa. And Airtel Africa reported numbers last week, and they were a disappointing set of numbers. There was a sharp drop in the company's revenue, sharp drop in the company's EBITDA. This was on account of the currency devaluation in Naira and plus inflationary you know, pressures in the other markets. So there is a possibility that consolidated numbers could be lower than consensus expectations expectations right now. The key that the street will track will be the India mobile business where it's likely to be steady. Even Geo reported a steady quarter this time. So revenue growth at 1.7% quarter on quarter, margins largely staying at that 55% mark. There are two important metrics that we track. One is the subscriber growth. How many subscribers do they add every quarter? And this time, it's likely to be about closer to 4 million subscribers. And the second important metric is ARPU, average revenue per user. In the absence of a big tariff hike, ARPU for Bharti Airtel has been increasing, but that's been increasing because of number of two, the, the number of 2G subscribers moving to 4G or their 4G subscribers moving to higher value pack. It's called premiumization, and that trend is likely to continue. So ARPU, according to our poll, should further improve to 211 rupees. Back to you. Right, Reema, thanks a lot for that. Meanwhile, a couple of stocks doing well. Uh, Interglobe Aviation has moved to the high point of trade. And uh, we're also seeing a decent pickup in names like SRF. Uh, from the frontline end of things, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra continues to move higher, up around 4% right now, the top nifty gainer. Also seeing some traction in a couple of these Adani group stocks. Adani Ent is the second highest nifty gainer. And as we speak, just keep an eye out on Britannia. Some bit of profit taking in a couple of these FMCG names. Uh, Nigel Britannia at the low point of trade. Well, that's right, uh, Mangalam. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, uh, wrap up on this show with news that the markets continue to hold in the green. The Nifty is up. The Nifty Bank is unmoved yet again. But as we mentioned at the start of the show as well, the positive today is the advanced decline ratio is firmly in favour of the number of stocks that are advancing. And the crisscross lines will tell you that picture because 1,700 stocks are still holding well at the green. Stay with us. Trading R comes up next.